welcome to Reimagination at Work. This is the podcast where we seek to challenge everything you think you know about the world of work and business and encourage you to think about new ways of doing things to try and find ways of working that are more diverse and inclusive and happier and better, more productive, more successful for everybody. My name is Allegra Chapman. I am one of the co-creators of Watch This Space, which is a diverse, diversity and inclusion consultancy. And I am joined by my fellow co-creator, Mo Cantelau. Hi, I'm Mo, one of the co-creators of Watch This Space. And Mo, it's series two of the podcast. It's series two. I can't believe we've got to series two. And the last time, so when we started series one, we were heavy and just into lockdown, yeah, weren't we? And now we're into series two. Crazy. Series two of lockdown. Series wow. two of lockdown. As well. <laughs> yeah. Maybe oh dear, is that a bad thing? Like we started series one of the podcast and lockdown happened, so now we started series two and lockdown two is happening. Is it us? <laughs> Are we causing this? Yeah. yeah. It's not us. I promise. No, it's, it's really not. not. Or is it? <laughs> but actually, you know, interestingly, with that. We were getting uh, instructions from the government that we all had to go back to work. There was a lot, a lot of go, get back to work, get back to the office. Yeah, those are that, and you know my thoughts on that. Well, I don't know, you know. Well, I do know how you feel about it because we talked about it at length. But I got so frustrated with the messaging around that because they kept talking about getting back to work, and we've been bloody working this whole time and working harder, I think, than pre-lockdown. Because yeah, it's been so stressful being locked in your house and I mean for me in a little corner of my bedroom with my toddler banging on the door screaming at me wanting biscuits and just attention and then to be like oh yeah you will need to get back to work now I find really insulting that's the thing a lot of people so for, for tons of people I'm one of them it's been great in loads of ways in my very middle class life <laughs> in my house I have a nice space to work it's been fine lots of people have been doing this under difficult circumstances with small children with no space to work and um, no no good internet connection you know, there's all kinds of things people have been battling through but they have been working and most companies have found that people are more productive that things are good with people working remotely that you know people that were having long commutes are now like well I don't think I want to go back to four hours commuting a day when I can do the job I was doing and have that four hours in my life so I think to just order everybody back to something that was before lacks imagination and then lo and behold we've now had the announcement that actually we should work at home if we can yeah and that just shows the the madness of it insisting everyone packs themselves back into a crowded office again when actually it turns out that people being packed into spaces together is is at least partly contributing to a second spike and now sending everybody home it's just yeah a very short-sighted approach yeah but um yeah we've all been we've all been told to work from home again and um so now we're kind of making that readjustment but obviously for a lot of people like you said it has been really working and, and i have to say even for me and my husband you know it has been challenging because we've been um well because we've got a toddler that's the main reason um, it's you know it's really hard work but at the same time there are loads of benefits you know we don't have to commute we do have a better work-life balance and we can be more productive because we've got more kind of space to, to really you know, focus in on things and and feel more relaxed about our work and you know for so many people it's a really beneficial environment and it opens up so many pos- more possibilities for them to be able to work because they don't have to worry about travel they don't have to worry about accessibility to get into an office they don't have to worry about school runs and timing around that they you know all of these things suddenly opens up so many more possibilities for people so i think you know we were really sad to see the government leading with that really um limited understanding of working that everybody had to be in an office to do it yeah but now we have to, um, you know, have to re-embrace flexible working again. So, which of course some companies have been doing all the way through and always did. That's nice segue into that. Yeah, leads us very nicely into today's guest, who is Lauren Fern from Zapier. So Zapier are a fully remote company. They've never had an office, um, and they are based in America, but uh, with people all around the world, and everybody works remote, and uh, they have been way ahead of the game on this they know exactly how yeah. to, to do the right working thing so hi lauren welcome to reimagination at work um so lauren tell us a little bit about zapier and your role there yeah um hey everyone so um yeah i'm lauren obviously so i am a senior manager at zapier um i started working at zapier about three years ago 
um, managing the um, Europe, Middle East and Africa kind of branch of our um, customer support team and moved to senior manager about um, six months ago to take over um, running all of um, core support. So core support is basically our free users, our um, starter customers, our professional plan customers and our trial users as well. Um, and Zapier basically, the best way to describe it is like a web-based productivity engine that helps you connect all your apps together. Um, so you can connect like quite a lot of people connect like Facebook lead ads to their emails, for example. So you can have your leads sent to you and things like that. Um, so it kind of helps you automate lots of the boring stuff that nobody wants to do. <laughs> Interesting. And, and I guess so. my first question for you is, obviously, we used to work together, as we were saying earlier, we only overlap for maybe a month maximum, but that job was every day in the office. So what made you decide to join a company that's 100% remote working? So I think the thing that drew me first, and I think this is the thing that draws pe quite a lot of people when they think about remote working, is that kind of like digital nomad lifestyle of like travel. And that was the thing. And my husband, who's my um, fiance at the time we were like oh we're gonna go and travel i'm gonna go diving and stuff like that and um very quickly kind of started to realize that that is that's great but also what ended up happening was that we could move out of brighton because we weren't i was wasn't working there anymore and he worked sort of out in the countryside so we could move out of brighton and actually buy a house so we ended up moving to the burbs instead of doing the travel thing but that was actually really nice because we could have our own space much bigger um smaller seaside town which was really really lovely so that was kind of interesting I didn't expect that to happen so quickly um, and the other thing was I really wanted to like prioritize myself and, and my own my home life and I found I found I loved working in an office but I did find it quite tiring I found it very very tiring kind of every single day being around lots of people and um, I didn't really know that about myself until I've been working you know in offices for probably about six years that you know, I was tired all the time and I couldn't really figure out why. So when, um, when I got the job at Zapier, um, you know, I was kind of like, oh, this is going to be so great. This is going to be so amazing. And it was a real kind of um, massive change. Because obviously, Mo, you know, the, the office we used to work in was like 80 people, huge open plan. Yeah. And then to be like in a desk in my tiny little flat in Brighton was a huge change. So it was... The reason why I wanted to do it was because of the kind of allure of digital nomadism, but actually I ended up doing the settle down thing, which has been really nice. <laughs> How did you adapt to that change? Because as you said, it's quite a big switch to go from a huge office full of loads of people to suddenly being on your own. How, how did you find that? Well, lots of people kind of said to me, oh, how, how are you going to find it? Because, you know, you're quite a sociable person and everything. Um, and I, I was kind of like, I don't really know, to be honest. I honestly don't know how it's going to go. And it was actually fine. The thing that I kind of found out about myself was that once I have less of those distractions of like, can we just chat about this? Or do you mind if just coming to this meeting? I was just, I felt super productive. Like I get so much stuff done. Um, and actually I figured out that I kind of quite liked my own company and to just be able to crack on. So the change was something that I was kind of a little bit apprehensive about but it turned out to be quite great really the only thing I do really miss is like going to the pub on a Friday because you don't really have anyone to do that with <laughs> when my husband gets home from work I'm like do you want to go to the pub and he's like, <laughs> I'm laughing at that one because the office that um, Lauren and I used to work in there was a real tradition of pub on a Friday <laughs> yeah yeah and it was so that's actually how I met my now husband by going to the pub on a Friday after work yeah, and I can probably guess which pub that was as well. Yeah. <laughs> we should do a little shout out to the Magix gang because that's yeah. why we always go to the pub on a Friday. Yeah, love the Magix gang. So much fun. Such a great place to work and yeah. like, fun culture as well. Yeah. Um, so then I guess if we go on to Zapier and how they do things, I've got loads of questions about how they do things, but yeah. I'm interested in how, how, what's it like joining a company where there isn't an office you go to to start your job? Like how do they create the sense of belonging to people mm. that are all over the place? Yeah, so um, it's, it's something that it has kind of really evolved in the three years that I started at Zapier because um, we've gone through massive, massive growth in the past sort of three years. And so when, when I first joined the company, we didn't have 
lots of onboarding and things like that. We had um, onboarding that was very specific to the team, but we didn't have anything that was like onboarding you into the company necessarily. So one of the first things that happens now when you join the company is that you're put into onboarding for a week, which is with a cohort of other people who are joining the company at the same time. And you learn about like our culture and about our company objectives and all of the things that you need to know, like the way we communicate. Um, we've got like an internal blog called Async and that's kind of like a fire hose of information that you have to sort of adapt to. And so you learn all about those tools and everything that will help you be successful. Um, in terms of kind of like specific things for our team, um, our team motto is keep, keep support weird, which sounds very kind of general and we don't really have it super defined, but it's something that has allowed us to like really lean into everybody being themselves and everyone just like truly being fun and silly and working hard, but also being really, really fun and open with one another. So that's a big, um, a big one for us that as we've kind of grown into a bigger team, because we're about 50 people now, um, we need to better define that because as you get bigger, it can be harder to become kind of present in a team of that kind. A um, couple of things we do is when you hit the six month mark, you everybody gets a growth plan. That's throughout the whole company. Um, and I just, I love that about Zapier because I think that that's a way to really know where your impact lies. And so you know where you live in this in this Zapier world. Um, quite often when you're a new person and it's remote and there's like 350 people working at, at a company, it's kind of, it can be a little bit unclear of where you fit in this in this whole new space that you're walking into. So having that and having a manager to help you guide help guide you on areas that you can opportunities that you can take up that are related to your growth plan is something that we're pretty keen on making sure that everybody has access to. Um, the EMPS survey, I'm sure every, everyone, every company kind of has an EMPS survey, but that I would say is like the P people ops is Oscars, I reckon, like their big event of the year, because it's something that really sets the course for all of our inclusion efforts. You know, it's all well and good creating a plan around inclusion, but if it's not related to all the feedback that you're getting, it doesn't, it's not going to be super meaningful. So that really helps us to understand where we're not doing the best or where we can improve. And so a lot of our plans are formulated around that. We just did that, we do it twice a year. Um, so that's always a really exciting time to see the results of that. And that gets shared with everybody at the company. So that's always really, really cool. Um, and then the last thing really that comes to mind is around social events. And this has been quite, um, quite a big thing for us at the moment, given that we can't have any retreats, that's how we really connect. So we usually have three retreats a year, two, uh, two whole company retreats and then one team retreat. And not being able to do that has meant that there has been, we haven't been able to like have fun together as much. So um, the team leads have organized events like coffee mornings and um, lightning talks where people can talk about, you know, whatever they want really, but stuff they know or stuff they've learned. Um, we're doing a pub quiz in a few weeks. We're doing a careers week thing ready for 2021. So just trying to create opportunities for people to see each other's faces. Um, and the biggest thing for that is to try and do it with time zones that overlap, which is very difficult because you don't want to make people stay late or get up early. And you don't really want to do a quiz at like 7am for some people. So you've got to get it right. <laughs> How do, you, how do you go about doing that, about kind of, you know, coordinating all of those different time zones and making sure that you're, you know, you're kind of making it work for everybody? Yeah, that's a really good question. Like the number one tool that I swear by is this, um, is this little app called Time and Date Planner. And there's like a meeting widget. So you can, because sometimes it's easy to talk about time zones and everything, but when you actually see that all these time zones la laid out next to each other, it really makes you aware of, of how difficult it is to schedule these kind of things. So for anything that we schedule, there has to be multiple of it. So we have like two big team meetings a month, one for um, East Coast, US and um, Europe, Middle East and Africa. And then we have one for APAC and for West Coast. And that's the kind of groups that we bucket into so that we can make sure everyone gets what the same thing, really. Um, but it is a shame because it's very rare that folks in like early EMEA don't really get to see a lot of people in the West Coast and, and things like that. So sometimes there'll be things where we might have to, as managers, kind of take one for the team and run a late meeting or whatever, or, or ask people to stick around. But all of those things are very much optional. So if it feels like it's a bit too much for folks, especially now, given you know, everything that's going on, 
um, that's totally fine too. We're not like, have fun with us. <laughs> <laughs> Must have fun right now. <laughs> so, I was going to say, I've got a question about, so it sounds to me like there's a lot of kind of uh, meetings that you're joining, the uh, webinar, Zoom, whatever mm. technology you're using, meetings. I myself find those quite draining when you have one after another. Mm -hmm. So how do you handle that? Is there, are there like limits around how many of those you have a week, et cetera? Yeah, so there's two things that have been completely like fundamental to my usage of Zoom, not just in, in everything that's going on, but the whole time I've been at Zapier. The first is don't ever schedule anything back to back. Always put at least a 15 minute meeting in between so you can go and get a drink and whatever. Um, because if you, if you do a 30 minute between those meetings, that time will just disappear. But if you leave nothing, you're like watching the clock at the end of that meeting and it can be quite stressful. Um, so that is, I would definitely recommend putting 15 minutes in between each um, Zoom meeting that everybody has. And then the other is um, if, because I manage two people in Australia and one person in um, Portland in the US, so very early, very late, and there I have had to really, it's, take, it's taken me a long time to figure out the right scheduling to get to see everyone, um, because though I would try and see all of those people on one day and that was just awful because I was kind of on calls from 7 a.m. till 7 p.m. and then I'd be like why do I feel terrible <laughs> on Tuesday yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now I kind of have a bit of a split week where Monday's kind of a normal day um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are earlier days for me and then Thursdays are later so I start my day a little bit later and finish it a little bit later um, and that works really nicely because I'm not trying to do everything you know at once because it can very quickly that work-life balance can come unstuck very quickly when you're working from home. Yeah, for sure. So with everything that's been going on, because Mo and I have been getting very irate, haven't we, about the government keep saying, everyone's got to get back into the office, it's got to happen immediately. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, we're already on record as saying, we do not think you should be going back into the office and it's yeah. not necessarily a good idea. Um, but it, is all of that just kind of really baffling to you then, hearing them say, everyone's got to be in the office, why aren't, why aren't you at work? It really has made me just kind of have like a bit of a wake up call about the, uh, about office culture and the fact that, you know, it is, I understand why it's there, but I do think that um, companies should have some very flexible policies around it about having people work from home some days a week, come in for meetings, whatever it is, because like, I, I genuinely feel like my whole life has changed from working remotely. I feel like I'm able to sort of do the boring things in my life without it really impacting my work. You know, doing the kind of adulting stuff is super easy and, and doesn't feel stressful. I'm not spending my weekends doing things like washing and tidying up because if I have, you know, I can do that throughout the day or I take a lunch break and do it then. Um, so that's been really, really big. So yeah, it's, it is baffling to me why you would spend a lot of money on an office space when that infrastructure could be used to create a really, really strong, amazing remote team that opens up so many opportunities for um, you know, people across the country, across the world to join the business as well. So yes, it's definitely baffling. Um, so it's, it's also interesting when kind of going through the, the very, when the height of the lockdown was happening and people are kind of saying to me, oh, what's going on with you? And I'm like, everything is, is exactly the same. Yeah, nothing's <laughs> weird. <laughs> Um, and obviously I'm super lucky to be able to say that and, and you know a lot of people have had really really difficult experiences and everything my husband being one of them who's self-employed so I felt very lucky to be able to have like a stable situation going on um, during that time so yeah I, th I just think remote work is the future I think it's so so beneficial to companies and to, to people's mental health and, and just really shows that actually you're important as a person rather than just like come to this office and do the thing that you could have done at home <laughs> Yeah, for sure. So I think a lot of companies are struggling with how you um, do the things they feel you all need to be in the same building for. So I think it's around things like building the culture. Some of it is around some kind of command and control, seeing you sit at your desk for the right amount of hours a day. But I guess what I'm interested in is how Zapier gets across things like the company strategy and like people understanding what they're part of and like product development and how do they handle those kinds of things? Oh, that's a great question because we're just going into our planning at the moment. So for the three months towards the end of the year, um, we get really, really heavily into planning. And um, that is like a cross company thing. Everybody's involved um, and it's really fun, actually. So the way that we kind of, the way that it ha usually works is that the executive team will go and have kind of an offsite and then they will um, come up with some really high level plans of 
things that they want us to focus on for the next year. And then we'll take that away and it will get made into specific kind of projects and initiatives. And this year we've come up with different themes um, for each of the teams to focus on. And we've just, my team actually just wrapped up about four weeks worth of feedback. Every single week there was a different topic, a, a theme to talk about in team meetings. Um, and everybody would kind of give their feedback about like things that weren't working or things that we should do, things we should try, things they've seen elsewhere. Um, and then what will kind of happen there is that we'll reduce those into the highest priority, biggest impact things that we can do next year. Um, and then we'll consolidate that with the rest of the company. And this whole process is completely transparent. So we post it every, everywhere. <laughs> talk about planning all the time. I'm actually a bit tired of hearing myself talk about it. <laughs> um, so we have, um, we have an internal blog called Async. And so any big company announcements get posted on that blog and everybody gets tagged in it. So it's like, this is a thing that's like required reading basically. Um, and we have, we use Coda a lot, which is a really, really great tool um, for documentation. So there's a lot of different Coda docs that are kind of going around at the moment with everybody's plans. And our Coda doc is completely open to comments from everyone on the team. So we've posted our themes and now they're open for everybody to sort of say, here's an idea I have about this. Um, so the planning process is really enjoyable. And once we kind of get to the end of that, the, there's like a big all hands meeting and we talk about our plans. By that point, um, everything will have been discussed like kind of previous so there's no surprises it's not it's not like a big dramatic kind of reveal it's just like everybody knows where we're at and we're going to just have a quick conversation about it so um, it's just really important to be super transparent about what you're up to and if you think that you're there's uh, someone said this to me the other day and I thought this was really interesting because I kept saying that I felt like I was over communicating and someone was like there's you're never over communicating even if nobody kind of cares what you're saying or is responsible <laughs> for what you're saying, like it's, it's important to just put it out there sort of thing. So that's been a great kind of reminder for me to just be fine with putting stuff out there. And if it doesn't get lots of engagement or anything, just to be okay with it, because at least it's out there and it's, it's, it's there for everybody to see. So it sounds like there's some really good tools that are used to help, which doesn't surprise me given, given the <laughs> company, but it sounds like you've got some great tools that you use to collaborate with each other. Yeah, yeah. So the, 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 the most important tools for this planning process has been um, Mural, which is like a board software, which is really, really nice to use for like collaborating ideas on. Coda, which is great for documentation and cop um, having everything written down so people can view all of your plans in one place. Um, we used to use Google Docs for that, but it just feels very separate. Um, whereas Coda, it has like a nice menu and everything, so you can refer back to everything. Um, and then our internal tool async as well has been huge. And obviously Slack. Forget about Slack, but Slack is like yeah. Our office. <laughs> Yeah, okay. And then, uh, so when you have meetings, which for you are always going to be, apart from when you have off sites by the sounds of it, are always going to be webinars. One of the things I've been reading a lot about is that with the change to everybody remote working, when you have meet, um, like Zoom meetings, it seems to be certain people that hold the, hold the stage, hold the floor, yeah. if you like, like you get in face-to-face -face meetings as well. How does that work at Zapier? Um, that's a really good question, and it's something that, um, I think we've all become very, very used to trying to facilitate other people weighing in on conversations. So there's two things really. When you, I think you have to get really okay with uncomfortable silences on Zoom. That's like the key to being good at facilitating anything on Zoom. So when you ask a question, um, you know, wait for people to reply. And then there's a, there's a key, this is a thing that L&D teach us to do, which is, I think is super, super useful, um, is, when you when there's like a conversation happening and you feel like lots of folks maybe aren't getting involved you just say the phrase what else and then you leave it and then kind of see what comes out of that so that's been really really cool to see kind of what happens if you ask that question as well and then the other thing obviously is just to make sure that everybody feels like you, you're having that meeting in a safe space so quite often what we'll try and do when we're having discussions about things like team happiness or um you know growth or things like that we'll have those in our very small team meetings rather than having them in a meeting of 50 people because that's very difficult to facilitate a conversation like that. Um, the other thing I would say is Zoom is a great tool and, and they have uh, uh, breakout rooms, which is really mm. useful as well. So we just did um, a bunch of our planning um, using Zoom breakout rooms, which was nice because 
also got to work with a bunch of people from across the business that we don't really see that much. Um, and it meant that everybody could be, really be involved in the conversation as well. That's really cool. Um, we, we always default to saying Zoom because we use Zoom all the time. Yeah, yeah. Other, other it's become like the verb, hasn't it? Yeah. 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 You know, of course, are available. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I can't think of any right now, but there are. <laughs> um, when it comes to managing people, because I, I may have mentioned earlier about that kind of you know, need to sort of see people in the desk and see them working, um, which obviously you know, we're, we kind of preach a lot about needing to let go of and not being kind of being needing to watch people. At the same time, when you're managing people, it can be quite useful to see them in a room because you can see if someone is looking stressed or if they're struggling or if they're kind of falling behind with their workload or if they've actually done everything super quick and they, you know, are bored and want more to do. Yeah. How do you make that adjustment then to, to managing a team when you can't see them and you can't kind of feedback necessarily of how they're feeling or, you know, how they're doing in their day? Yeah, I think the biggest thing um, that's super important for that is building is building trust with the people that you manage. So the way that we do that is we don't have anyone uh, managing more than four or five people. So they really know what's going on with their teams um, because it's very easy to um, to kind of lose sight of everybody or, or for folks to fade into the background when you're managing like maybe 10 or 15 people, especially remotely. So having those small teams is really, really powerful because they all work together. They talk about things together. They have opportunities to chat together and they also should feel like they have enough time with their manager or team lead to really kind of like foster a really good connection. So we talk a lot about um, trust and transparency is a huge thing as well. The thing that I say to all of my directs is, is that I expect them to tell me everything that they need to tell me to make sure that I can make them happy and comfortable and, and, and enjoy working at Zapier. Um, and that is, that is, um, it works really well, but I think it can be a new thing. You know, when you join a company and they're like, trust me and I'll do whatever you need me to do. It can be a bit like, this is new. Um, so I think that it takes a little while for people to feel safe doing that, to feel psychologically safe, to lean into somebody who is their manager and to build that trust with them. So it's a real process of, um, getting to know them, having, having social chats, whether that's just over Zoom, um, Zoom, saying Zoom too much, Slack, <laughs> um, chatting with people on Slack or, or spending some time in one-on-ones, just having a conversation as well. Those um, small social interactions are really, really important. So the trust and transparency piece is, is really, really important. And then also we are, we talk a lot about giving feedback. So the, the, the feedback should never be like a one-way thing. We always try and make sure that everybody feels like there's a loop of feedback. That's, I give you feedback, you give me feedback, and that's how it works. So those are things that we really prioritize, and I think that that allows us to um, like feel like we can, we can be clear about what people need. Um, and then we do have like a really great people ops team who help us with things like growth plans and, and setting expectations around roles and everything. So people know where they stand. But one thing that we that is quite important is that um, we allow people to pick up what they want. So they have a certain amount of time that they spend in the queue each day. And then everyone has personal development time as well. And that's up to them how they spend it. So there might be some people who are interested in leadership, for example, who spend their um, personal development time learning about leadership and, and you know new concepts and things like that and there might be another person that spends time picking up a project from support operations and helping them do that you know whether they might might be the type of person who's trying to move to engineering and they're picking up something more technical so that's something that is kind of slightly flexible but managers and team leads make sure they know kind of what everybody's doing so they can support there is there like learning resources available or do, do they offer training how does that work yeah so um uh, one of my favorite things about Zapier is the learning and development team because it's it's extensive and it's really really just amazing you know we have so much training at our um, fingertips we have a yearly budget for training and, and going well I say going to conferences that's not a thing at the moment but <laughs> you know what I mean. um, so just um, there's a lot of resources in terms of kind of like the leadership stuff specifically but if there's something that you want to go and learn so say you want to go and learn a coding language you can find a course and um, have a chat with your manager about it and then they'll approve it and, or, and then you just get to go and do it and you can spend your personal development time doing that. So there's so many resources, but we do ask folks to kind of be independent in, in what they want rather than really leaning on their manager to say, this is what you should do. 
I think that that element of trust that you mentioned is is so important for those remote teams. And I think that's where a lot of businesses struggle mm. with the idea of remote working is trusting their team to just get on with their work without being watched, the team being able to trust the manager, like you said, being able to kind of come to them and be open with them and, and yeah. you know, raising problems rather than just struggling and, mm. and you know, fostering that culture of, of trust is, is what a lot of people I think are quite daunted by mm. and what's, what, you know, is a really important component of making remote working work. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I completely understand why that might be the case. And I think it kind of ties into what you were saying, Mo, about people feeling like they don't want to sort of let go of that control a little bit. And the thing that I would say is like, when you do start to let go of that control and you try and you do say essentially to your staff, I trust you, I trust you to get on with your job. People were happier, they're more productive. You know, it really does work. So I know that it might feel uncomfortable, but just lean into that discomfort because you don't know how good it could be on the other side I would say yeah definitely and that then leads me on to I guess people listening to this are going to be going right how do I join that company it sounds amazing how does recruitment work when everyone's remote um so we have a really amazing team of recruiters and we have specific recruiters for each kind of function as well so we have um few recruiters that work especially for um, across customer success. So that's support and success, community, lots of different teams within um, that function. And they are, we post, we have hiring managers who are responsible for saying, right, this is what I need. We have somebody who helps the um, hiring team from our side to kind of facilitate all the documentation and everything that's needed to post the job ads. And then the recruiting team are really responsible for um, like sourcing candidates. We all post the job everywhere that we can. Um, and then in terms of the actual process itself, um, we have like a very specific application because the thing that we think is really important about applying for jobs, especially in the current market, is not worrying too much about previous experience because we have people who are amazingly successful in this role who have never worked in support. There's somebody on the team who was in professional golf. So you, know, <laughs> you, don't, you really don't know what how someone's going to perform in a job just because of what they've done previously i think there's a bit of an exception to that rule but for the most part we try and make sure folks don't feel like they have to attach a resume or a cv and things like that and um we go through like a quite a rigorous interview process to make sure people would actually be able to um do the job itself because zapier is a pretty technical product and and there's also about 2000 apps that you need to sort of be okay with troubleshooting as well so we want to set people up for success by making sure that they're good for the role and we've been really clear about what the role is itself. Brilliant. So you've, you've sold the world of remote work. So <laughs> you convinced everyone it's a brilliant idea. Um, for all the kind of companies who are listening or the, you know, the managers who are thinking, okay, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm convinced I'm going to, I'm going to let go of my inner control freak and I'm going to embrace this. And actually for a lot of people, it won't be a choice now. Mm, we've yeah. Always, always mm -hmm. again, so they've got to figure it out. What advice could you give to, to leaders and organisations about how to start to, to implement this and then kind of start to embed remote working in their culture? Yeah, I think definitely the first one would be to just push through that discomfort. That would be the first thing. Um, the second thing I would say is that when you, you need to set really good boundaries for yourself, as a, especially as a manager, what well, everybody does, but especially as a manager, because I think there can be a real kind of like, concern or feeling of FOMO when you're working remotely um, and this was something that I learned pretty quickly is that you just cannot be in every time zone it's physically impossible so don't even try because you will be tired all the time um, so I think setting really good boundaries um, you know not having things like slack on your phone and checking it or creeping upstairs going look at your laptop which is what they used to do sometimes <laughs> um, and so making sure that you're setting really good boundaries is important and the other thing I would say is um, rather than worrying that it's not going to work, just identify some key tools that you think will just connect some of the things, connect some of the dots and start there. Don't feel like you have to have all the answers to every single thing that's going to come up straight, straight away. But you Slack, get yeah, Zoom, um, use some sort of centralised documentation place that's really, really visible for everybody. Um, don't try and replace all of your interactions with meetings as well. Um, and then the last one, which I think is probably the most important one, is to just really, really lean into written communication. Like if it's not your strong point, then make it your strong point. Do more to try and help yourself 
get good at it because it's the thing that will really help to push you forward and sometimes it can feel frustrating if you're kind of talking with someone and, and maybe you're not really connecting or getting through and you need to talk something through on zoom but don't let that be the default of straight away we need to jump on a call about this because it can very quickly become tiring to spend a lot of time on zoom so written communication is is really um really a strong point for remote work definitely great advice and i guess that leads me on to probably my other thought which is having to how long have you been working remote now is it three years and um, three years in january yeah yeah is there anything you miss about the office uh uh, there is actually, I do really miss, um, this is, I don't know if this was just in the Magic's office, but this is one of my favourite things about just work in general, is when it gets to about four o'clock on a Friday and everyone's just feeling a little bit Friday, you know, and it's just like a really nice feeling and everybody's excited to go to the pub, obviously, but also, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> obviously um, and then just have their weekends. So that, that was a really, really enjoyable experience for me and I don't really get that. I still get the Friday feeling but I, I'm by myself, so it's very yeah. different. <laughs> um, but the thing that I would say is that that has really been replaced by, I've made some amazing friends at Zapier, and so I still have, I still feel very connected to the people that I work with. It's just in a different way. And I would probably even say those connections are, are probably a little bit deeper because you're able to have more um, kind of close conversations because you're not necessarily speaking to someone face to face. It's kind of easier to talk about your feelings, I find. Um, you know, if it's written down. So while I really miss that, I do think that there's a lot to be said for connecting with people, internet friends, I would say. It feels like internet friends. Internet friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's right. all really awesome. And I think there's some really great advice there for people to, to take away and, and think about. Um, and it, you know, you must feel so ahead of the game while everyone else is running around going, oh my God, working remote how do we fix this and you're like I'm all over it <laughs> <laughs> it's taken a while to get there but yeah definitely and and what I would say is if, if, if anybody has questions about working remotely like shoot me a message on LinkedIn I'm, I'm more than happy to help we also have a remote work guide which I'll email over to to, to both of you so Great, you yeah if you want to um because one of the things that kind of happened when lockdown really came into effect was that our um one of our co-founders Wade was getting so many questions that he was like I'm doing a webinar we're going to get this all out, so I'll send it to you. Well, <laughs> yeah, that will make sure that everybody... And I was going to say, so where, yeah, where's the best place to find you? Is LinkedIn the best place to connect yes. with you? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, LinkedIn's the best, yeah. Cool. cool. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us and taking time yeah. out. Thank you so yeah. much. It'd be yeah. nice to get the cup sometime when we can. I know, yes, when this all go, blows over, we'll yes. the plane over so we can have a pint. That'll be so exactly. nice. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for joining us and thanks everybody for listening so this is memory imagination at work tell all your friends and if you want to find more information about the work that we do around diversity and inclusion at work you can find us at watchthisspace.uk we are on all of your social media platforms as at watch this spce and we're on linkedin which is watch this s p hyphen c e all right, I'm really bad at spelling things out loud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Lauren. And we will see you all in the next episode. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, thanks everyone. Lauren. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.